Hey, what's up guys? This is Cole with Tier 1. I am the 10R80 builder, uh, and today we're going over with you guys the difference between the Stage 1s and Stage 2s. This right here is a Stage 2 for a customer. He's got an F-150 Raptor, sent his trans in. It's getting the sta our Stage 2 rebuild, which comes with the Suncoast Cat 2 kit, revised CDF drum, revised outer shell, ratio tech shift kit. Um, so it's getting GPZs all throughout. It gets the expanded E and F clutch packs, which you go from five to six clutches in the E clutch and four to five in the F clutch, which is 20% more friction area in the E and 25% in the F. Those are very important shifts. The E clutch cycles on and off three times before fifth gear. It's on in first, off in second, on in third off and forth, on and fifth. It has a very important job in the F-Clutch, the problem child of the 10R80s, uh, most of the time because of CDF drum failure. But that is your third to fourth shift. So it's off and third, on and fourth, uh, through 10th. So that gets fixed um, with the Suncoast Cat 2 kit. Obviously you get more frictions in those clutch packs, but you also get the benefit of the GPZ material. It is a much better friction material than stock. And in addition, the Stage 1s and 2s get the Suncoast Pro Lock Converter, um, which is just a better converter than stock. When it comes to our valve bodies, we do the Ratio Tech Shift Kit. That gets you increased line pressure. It also gives you more pressure on the back of the lockup clutch, um, which helps you hold, obviously hold and lock up. We make a pump modification with the Ratio Tech Kit, and Dave does a bunch of fancy valve body stuff. And now we're gonna move on to building this thing. First things, First thing's output. Um, obviously, just lube it up. It'll start those roller bearings dry. That will not be a fun time. Drop that in there. Here, the park paw. The bearing. Move up the bushing. And we'll get the input on the P4 Sun Gear. in here, E-clutch housings from Suncoast. Um, that's their six count expanded capacity clutch housing. Um, get that dropped in there. Drop our new trash can on there, brand new from Ford, so we don't have any wear issues, and play issues, nothing like that. Got that in there, bearing behind it. Make sure that bearing's going in the right way. Or else this won't sit down properly. Drop this in there, nice and soft. Thing. Our P3 planet and sun gear. Sun gear in there. We'll planet. We've got lube on the bushings. Don't want any dry bushings. Nice CDF drum updated part from Ford so we don't have any bushing failures. Um, and subsequent. Clutch failures. It's not a good day. Just a little assembly trick. Something I do to make that a little bit easier. Sounds like it's all the way down. Pop this snapping back out and you can get the C clutches in there. But of course, our sun gear shaft in there. Put the bearing on there. That bearing only goes one way. And we can start stacking, stacking the seat clutch in there. The F clutch we're using on this is also the expanded capacity from Suncoast. Um, that upgrades your clutch count from four to five, which gives you 20% more holding capacity. Uh, and just friction, um, and just surface area alone, not to mention the friction material that's going from OE to GPZ. Slash 
see clutch in there. Back and plate, snap ring. Yeah. P2 planted on there. Two sun gear, and we can get our P1 sun gear. Put that on there. Then P1 planet and ring gear. All oh, it's an assembly. It's kind of a pain to get this one in there without pinching your fingers. in there, snap ring will hold it all together, and this should be the last of the main assembly. There it goes. Selective end play shim and your bearing on top of P1 sun gear, and we got the A clutches. GPZs throughout this thing. Makes relearn a pain, but they hold a lot better. Don't worry about that guy. And that's it. Now we've got our front support with A clutch and B piston, or with A piston and B clutch, I should say. And our sprag. Get this thing lubed up. Initially, I'll drop it in. Make sure that nothing's hanging up. Um, obviously, the A clutches are gonna hold it off of, uh, from sitting against the case. Uh, we just want to make sure that there are no hang-ups. Easiest way to do this, I just use a set of vice grips. Grab onto it. It's a little heavy. It's kind of awkward. Later. train. Sounds like it has. Seems fine. Seems fine. All right. Pull that back out, put a O-ring on it, and we'll drop it back in. generous amount of assembly lube on this. Because the B-clutch holds it off, you obviously don't want to tear this over when you're installing it. That would be a terrible, terrible day. My r, &R guys would not be very happy with me. There is no gasket on the mating surface between the front support and the case, so you want it as clean as possible. So we don't have any any leaks. Don't want any reason to pull this thing back out. Ever. There we go. Start dropping bolts on it. These dropped in there. 
and sink it down and air check and we can get a pump and valve body on. Sink these down as easily as possible. And now we're gonna pop a pump in this thing, uh, get our valve body in there that Dave just put the ratio tech kit in, filter on, and our new PPE pan, and we'll get this thing on the road. Mm-hmm.